how's it going? So today I have a really awesome video for you. We're going to talk about my favorite high-end products from 2015. Now, this is going to be just products that I discovered in 2015. So I have tons and tons of products that I loved for years, years before, and we're just going to not talk about those and just talk about the new things. And then I'm also going to be doing a similar video, but with drugstore products. So don't forget to subscribe so you guys can see that video when it goes up. Before we jump into that, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little life update. For those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you know that I took a little break between December and January, and we actually moved. So I had all of my stuff packed up, and it actually took quite a bit longer than expected and so I wasn't planning on taking a break it just happened that way and so I wasn't able to film for a while but I'm glad to be back and you probably can't even tell because I think I set everything up pretty much the same as it was set up before but we are in a new place and so this is a better setup for me to be able to film when I want and I can film anytime day or night so it's a little bit easier for me so now that we're done rambling, let's get into the favorites. We're gonna start off by talking about a couple of skincare items. Now this first one I'm just gonna mention really quick because I talked about it in depth in my latest high-end haul, so I'll link that below if you guys wanna watch it. But this is the Peter Thomas Roth Irish Moore Mud Mask. This is really great for people with oily or acne prone skin or both like me. What I like to do with this is I like to use it to spot treatment to really pull out any blemish that is like already formed and just like sitting there and it won't do anything. That's what I like to do. It really pulls out. If you use it as an all over face mask, it really dries out your skin in a good way. It's not going to make you break out. It's just going to dry your skin out so that you're not crazy oily. So I really, really love that. What I've really been loving as a moisturizer is from Belief. This is the Aqua Bomb Moisturizer. Now, they have one that looks very similar to this, but it's called the Moisture Bomb. That is a heavier cream. It's probably better for people with dry skin. This one is the Aqua Bomb. So it's really lightweight. It sinks into the skin really quickly. I can use this on my oily, sensitive skin as a day cream, and I don't get overly oily the rest of the day. So that's great that it will moisturize my skin, but not be too heavy and too greasy for me. If you guys have oily skin, I definitely recommend getting a sample of this one and trying it. Lastly, for skincare, I have a product that is not only a 2015 favorite, but it's probably like my favorite skincare product I've ever found in my whole life. It is from Sunday Riley, and it is, of course, her oils. Now, I have all of her oils, but my favorite one has been the Luna Oil. This is a really, really awesome oil. What I do is I put it on my skin at night after I put on my moisturizer and my serum, and it doesn't sink into my skin immediately, so I like to put it on before bed and let it sink in a little bit so that it doesn't get like all over my sheets and pillow and just wipe off my face. And then when I wake up in the morning, my skin feels so moisturized and so plump and just really, really soft. I have used a lot of different night creams and facial oils as nighttime moisturizers, but none of them leave my skin feeling the way that this one does, and most of them break me out. So this has been a really, really fantastic oil. It has really changed the way my skin looks. I have fewer breakouts. I still get oily, but I'm less oily when I use this oil as opposed to when I just forget to use it. Okay, let's talk about foundations. I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm just going to show you the foundations I've been loving. So the first one, I'm sure you guys all know everything about this. This is the It Cosmetics CC Cream. I usually wear the shade light. In the wintertime when I'm a little bit more pale, I do like to mix a little bit of the fair shade and the light together, and that gives me a better shade match for my winter shade. This is great because it gives you a solid medium coverage to your skin when you apply it. It's very easy to apply. You can use your fingers, you can use a brush, you can use a beauty blender. It looks beautiful any way you apply it. And like I said, it's got the SPF in it and it's got really great coverage. So this is a standout product. I have used it a ton. Next, I have this Lancome foundation. Now this one is relatively new to me. I got it, I think, in November, but it has quickly become my absolute favorite foundation. This has really great coverage without being really heavy and cakey and making you look like you have a mask on. So what I do is I put two thin layers of this on and it is a really nice medium to full coverage and it looks it looks like you have makeup on, I'm not gonna lie. It looks like you have makeup on, but it looks like you have just a really light layer of makeup. It doesn't look like you have a cake face or you have way too much on. So that's why I like this because it's like the best of both worlds. Another foundation that is relatively new to me is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. This is a foundation that doesn't play around. This is going to give you full coverage when you only use a tiny, tiny amount of product. So 
that's one reason I love it. I do often have um, blemishes or redness, things I want to cover up, and so this works this works like a dream. It's so easy. It's quick to apply. It does give a more matte finish after it's all set. And so I wouldn't recommend this to people who have dry skin because I think it's going to cling to a lot of those dry patches and really accentuate any dryness or fine lines that you have. But if you have normal to oily skin, I think this is going to be a great foundation for you. And then lastly is the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. These are another really great innovative product. Now, these are drops that are pure pigments. So what you're supposed to do with them is you're supposed to mix them with with other products to really customize them. So I like mixing it with a moisturizer or a BB cream or even like a primer. You can mix any of those things with it and just get a little bit of a lighter coverage. You can also add it to foundations to give you a more full coverage with those foundations or to change the color. So I have the shade G20, which is my normal shade. That's what I usually am. But in the summertime, I also have G30 to darken up foundations that are a little bit too light. That way I don't have to buy like three different color foundations for every foundation formula that I love. So this has been amazing. For face powders, I just have one to talk about. It is from Hourglass. This is the ambient lighting powder in the shade Dim Light. Now for me, like I said, I'm about NC20. This is the perfect color to add no color to my skin. So this doesn't add coverage. It doesn't change the color of my foundation. It just really matches my skin and sets everything in place. What I love about this powder is that it really makes my skin look airbrushed when I put it on. A lot of powders end up looking heavy and thick and cakey. This one is very light, very fine milled and for some reason it just really adds that airbrush effect so I love that and I have been using this like I said I use it almost every day and I've been using it I think I bought this at the end of 2014 and I just barely hit pan on it so it's going strong and it lasts a really long time let's talk about bronzers and contours I just have one bronzer it is from the Sephora line this is in the shade Fiji I really love this for overall bronzing just to warm up my skin. Now, as you can see, this bronzer is not a bronzer that's really, really overly warm. It is warm and it does give warmth to your skin, but it's not going to be one that's going to make you look orange. So that's one reason I love it. Another thing I love about it is there is a really slight sheen to this. And so in the winter time, I like to go a little bit softer, just really lightly warm everything up. In the summertime, I like go crazy and it gives a really nice glowy look to my skin. So this one is great, it's really inexpensive. Give it a little swatch next time you're at Sephora and I think you will love it. And then for contours, I have a couple. The first one is from Marc Jacobs. This is the Instamark Contour Palette and mine is in the shade Mirage Filter. Now, I don't use the highlight shade very often, but I really love this contour color. You can see it right here. It is really taupey and a little bit gray based. That is perfect for contouring because it really mimics the look of a shadow. It's not going to give you warmth or make you look muddy. It's just going to look like a really natural shadow. So I like to use this to really chisel out my cheekbones and around the perimeter of my face. It looks gorgeous. It looks very natural. And I love using contours like this that are cool toned to really help contour and define my facial features. The formula of this is another reason that I love it. This powder is very, very blendable and it's very soft. So when you do dip your brush in, you have to be very soft because the powder will kick up a lot of fallout if you just like go to town and dig your brush into it. So I'm just really careful, just barely tap it and then it's enough to do the whole one side of my face. But because it is so finely milled and so soft, it makes it very, very blendable. You don't ever get like a spot that you can't blend out. It just blends gorgeously. So this one is a winner. The other contour I've been using like crazy is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. Now again, I don't use the highlight shades in here very often, but the contour colors are gorgeous. You can see the tones are similar where it's that really kind of taupey gray based contour color that works perfectly to just mimic that shadow and look so natural and really help define your face. This one I also like because even though Kat Von D eyeshadows are very, very powdery and they have a lot of fallout, these contour colors don't kick up a lot of dust. So these ones are much more densely packed into the pans and they don't create a lot of fallout like that Marc Jacobs one does. And I also really like this because you have a few more colors. So you've got like a little bit of a warmer color if you want to warm up your face and then you've got this nice dark one if you have a deeper skin tone. So it works for a lot of different people. Let's talk about blush now. I have two blush formulas I wanna talk about and I love both of them for the same reasons. They're both very, very finely milled, very pigmented and you don't need a lot of product to get a nice flush to your cheeks. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Urban Decay Afterglow Blush Line. Now, this whole line, I love all of them. The formula is right, 
right where it needs to be. It looks gorgeous. Like I said, they're pigmented, they're smooth, they blend well. So this one is in the shade Crush. I do really like this color, but overall the whole line is the favorite, not, not just the color, even though this color is gorgeous. So this one, like I said, is Crush. This is like a really vibrant pink that you just need the smallest, smallest amount, and it looks beautiful on your cheeks. My other blush favorite are the Becca blushes. Now again, the whole line of these blushes is the favorite. They are very pigmented, smooth, easy to work with, but these two colors are my favorite blushes. So the first one is Flower Child. This one is my favorite blush, probably my favorite blush ever. I really, really love it. This is a really nice pinky peach and it's got a really nice sheen to it. It doesn't have like chunky glitter, it just looks nice, like a nice sheen, like it could double as a highlight. You don't need a highlight when you wear this one. It's just a gorgeous color. You can wear it with almost anything and it just looks flawless. And then my other favorite is the shade Damselfly. This one is a lot more neutral than Flower Child, but it still has a little bit of a pinky undertone to it. So it doesn't look super bronzy on the cheeks. It still gives you a little bit of color and that pinky flush. So it looks gorgeous. Again, these two colors are... They're so good, you guys. These two are my favorite of life. Since we're already talking about Becca, let's just go ahead and go on to my highlight favorites. So, I have a Becca highlighter, and I'm pretty sure that all of you know what color this is, right? Right? This is Champagne Pop. Now, I know last year, everybody was absolutely in love with the shade Opal, and I liked that, but it, it wasn't my favorite. And this one is, this one has definitely beat out all of my other highlights. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous peachy shade that just looks good on everyone. I have seen people who are much more fair than me wear it, and I've seen people who are very, very dark wear it, and it looks just gorgeous. So I think it works really well because it's got a really nice peachy gold undertone to it, and it just is so flattering to so many different skin tones. So this is definitely a favorite. I won't keep blabbing about it because you've heard so much about it already. My other highlight favorite is one that Everybody was talking about when it first came out and everybody loved it, but I really haven't heard very much about it in the last several months. So this is the Makeup Forever Pearl Sculpting Duo in the shade number two. This one, again, is a very, very intense highlight and it's very, very gold. The Champagne Pop one is more like peachy. This one is just straight up gold, but it is so gorgeous. I also like to use this as an eyeshadow or to put in my inner corners of my eyes. It looks beautiful and there's so many ways to use it. So this is one you guys need to go try and swatch it if you haven't tried it yet. I have two matte eyeshadows that were my favorites this year. And of course the first one is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. This is another one I feel like was everybody's favorite this year, but it is because it is just that good. What I like about this palette is that the powders are very, very soft. And like I said with the Marc Jacobs palette, when the powders are soft like that, they blend really easy. So I don't mind being careful with my eyeshadows or my powders to make sure that I don't get fallout on my face because they blend so well that that doesn't even bother me. So I love this palette. The colors are gorgeous. You have some warms and cools and neutrals. This one right here is my favorite, this nice warm brown. And then this like really peachy color makes a really gorgeous transition color. So. This is a palette that if you hadn't, if you hadn't, if you haven't played with, you need to go try it and swatch it because I can almost guarantee that you'll fall in love with it. The other matte eyeshadow palette I have, you guys, I killed this palette this year. I used it so much. It is the Becca Ombre Rouge palette. This is the warm one. They do have the Ombre Nudes, but this is the warm one. So this is the most gorgeous matte eyeshadow palette. I use this almost every single day for probably like three or four months right after I got it and I would use it either to do my entire look or I would just use it for the crease work and then I would pull in a shimmery shade or a couple shimmery shades but these colors are so beautiful these three over here are the ones that I got the most use out of and they have pretty significant dents in them because I've used them so much but they are gorgeous these two make really good transition colors and then to warm everything up and then this one I'd like to put like really directly in the crease or to deepen it up. When you swatch the shadows, they don't feel overly creamy or they don't really feel like anything that's going to be amazing. But once you apply them to your eyes, I'm telling you, it's like magic. This palette is like a little magic palette and I don't know how Becca does it. They must be putting like baby tears in all of their products because they're amazing. And then the shimmer palette that I have been using like crazy is the Lorac Pro Metals palette. This is just a little tiny small palette but it's got these eight shimmer metallic shades in here that are, they make gorgeous lid colors. So these ones are very very smooth. I'm sure that most of you guys have tried or at least swatched Lorac 
Pro eyeshadows. They're very, very smooth. They're very, very metallic. So I generally get the most use out of these four lighter shades over here, but these over here are also really, really pretty. This green makes a really pretty smoky green eye, and the blue is really, really vibrant, and it actually shows up blue. I know that a lot of times when I find a blue eyeshadow, it looks, it just blends away, and it looks kind of like gray or black. This one is like a true royal blue and it just comes off that way. It doesn't muddy up or anything. It just looks so pretty. So this is a great little palette. It's relatively inexpensive. You can buy it at Ulta. It is really, really awesome if you're looking for some good metallic eyeshadows. Sticking with the eyes, I have a couple eyeliner favorites. The first one is this Lorac eyeliner. This is the front of the line black eyeliner. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that no eyeliners will stay in my waterline. I have tried like everything. A lot of people say the Marc Jacob ones are great or the Mally ones. None of them will stay in my waterline. This I just got by chance and I had kind of given up on finding a good eyeliner to put in my waterline. But this one is amazing. It stays in my waterline probably for about six hours, which is pretty, pretty amazing for me. And it's a very dry formula. And so that's why it sticks around. It's not one of those like creamy eyeliners that's just going to like glide onto your top lid really well. It is very, very stiff. And of course, since your eyes are already like wet, it doesn't pull or tug when you apply it to your waterline, but it will stay for such a long time. If you guys have a tricky waterline, you need to give this one a shot. I do not think you will be disappointed. Then for an actual eyeliner, I've really been loving the Tarte Tartist eyeliner. Now, when this came out, there were posts all over Instagram about all these like crazy things you could do with the eyeliner and how you could do all these weird designs and stuff. I just use it as a normal eyeliner and to do a wing, but it never smudges on me. It never flakes. Sometimes you have eyeliner and like you'll look in the mirror and there's like a big chunk of it gone and you don't know what happened to it. That never happens with this. So I love this. If I want a wing and I want it to stay all day, this is what I'm going to use every time. I wanted to mention two perfumes really quick and then we'll go on to lips. So the first one is the Victor and Roth Spice Bomb. Now this is a men's perfume, but I feel like this is a very, very unisex scent. It's very, very spicy and really like nighttime appropriate. This is one, next time you're in Sephora, just go smell it because I really feel like it's very similar to Flower Bomb, which is the girl version of the Spice Bomb, but this one I like so much more than Flower Bomb. So go check it out and see if you like this one. The other perfume that I've been loving is completely on the other end of the spectrum where the Victor and Rolf is very spicy and very nighttime appropriate. Then I have this one that is vanilla scented. This I heard about from Jaclyn Hill. I went and I tried it and I absolutely loved it. It's a vanilla perfume, but it smells like vanilla and almost like marshmallowy. It's really, really a nice scent. If you like really sweet scents, this is the one that I wear the most often. It's very inexpensive. I will link down below where I bought mine online. It's a great, great buy if you guys like sweet scents or if you like vanilla scents, you need this one. And then very last, we have lip favorites. So you guys already know my all-time favorite liquid lipstick are the Kat Von D liquid lipsticks. Now, these are my favorite. I have tried and tried and tried so many lipsticks hoping to find ones that are going to be the same as these or ones that are going to beat these and I I just can't find them. These ones, these ones are at the very top of my list. So I love these the most because they dry completely matte, but they don't feel overly drying on my lips. Of course they feel dry because they're liquid lipsticks, but if I use a balm before I put these on and I use a balm after, then I don't feel like my lips are parched or like they're going to fall off or like they're the Sahara Desert. They just feel fine. The other thing I really like about these is they never sink into my fine lines. When you apply them, they dry really quickly so they don't have time to sink in and really accentuate those lines. So these ones are definitely keepers. A couple of my favorite colors are Double Dare, Mother, and Lolita 2. Double Dare and Lolita 2 are actually very, very similar. Double Dare is a little bit more rosy and Lolita 2 is a little bit warmer. And then Mother is just a very nice, gorgeous pink. These three are my favorites. I have lots of others that I could name off, but these three are the ones I like the best. Then for actual lipsticks, my favorite has definitely been the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. They're really, really fantastic lipsticks. They're very pigmented. They're really, really smooth and opaque on the lips. They have a, like a satiny finish and so they're not matte. They don't dry your lips out. This one is Anna. I have tons of these lipsticks and these are just some of my favorites. So that one is Anna. It's like a cool toned mauvey pink. And then I have Anita, which is very similar to Anna, but it is a little bit warmer. And then my last favorite one is Audrey. And this is like a 
really warm berry shade right there. So they're all three really, really pretty and they're very, very pigmented. Just one swipe right there. You see how opaque that is? These are awesome, awesome lipsticks. And then really quick, I just wanted to mention Bite Beauty as a favorite. 2015 was definitely the year that I dove into the brand and found some really awesome products. Overall, I feel like everything I tried from them was great. So these two things aren't really the favorite colors or the favorite formula. I just wanted to mention that I love everything from them. I feel like their products are really high quality. Again, they have great pigmentation and great staying power. So Bite Beauty just overall is amazing. Okay, you guys, so those were all of my high-end favorites from 2015. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and found some new products that you could try out. If you guys have a favorites video, then let me know down below in case I missed it. Don't forget to subscribe and stick around. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.